Hi there and welcome to our next lesson in our B4 It's All Green topic and today we're going to be looking at transport in plants. We're going to be focusing on water transport for most of it but it also includes the transport of um, minerals such as potassium and nitrogen and we're also going to be looking at the movement of sugars as well. Okay, so let's have a look at our objectives for this lesson. So by the end of this lesson, you should know and understand how water is able to move through a plant and the factors that affect the rate of water movement in a plant. Okay, so let's have a look at the structure of the plant. Now, at the top here, we've got the flower. Now, that's where the reproductive organs are, and they're needed to produce seeds. Now, underneath here, we've got the leaves. Now, these are broad thin and flat for the large surface area. Uh, it's also where photosynthesis happens as well. Now then we have the stem and the stem is how we transport substances from the leaves to various other parts of the plant and that's where we have the xylem and phloem to help move those substances around the plant. Now this is also where the majority of the translocation occurs. Now this is, all it means is the movement of materials. So it could be sugars, it could be minerals um, from one place of the plant to the other part. So where we've got the sugars being made here, they are translocated via the, the phloem to other parts of the plant where they're needed for respiration. Now, it may be that they're sent to the roots or the merry stems where they're sent to for, for growth. Now, the final part is the, the roots, and obviously they're part of this translocation system and part of the transpiration system as they move water up to the leaves ready for photosynthesis. They also contain lots of xylem and phloem to be able to participate in that translocation. Now with the translocation that happens within the xylem and the phloem, you can see where the, uh, or the relative sizes of the, the two uh, transport systems are. So here in the, in the leaf, you've got the xylem and the phloem cells that are roughly a similar size. Now when we go from the leaf to the stem, you can see again they're a similar size, but compared to the leaf, we've got more, more of them. And then when we get down to the roots, you can see that the xylem cell is massively bigger compared to the phloem. And that's because this is where the water comes into the plant. So the xylem, which removes or moves the water around, uh, needs to be a lot bigger as there's more water coming through the roots. Whereas with photosynthesis at the leaf, you also want to remove the sugar from the, from the production of photosynthesis. Plants will inevitably lose water, and this can happen via three ways. The first is transpiration, and that's the movement of water through the plant. Then we get the water loss via evaporation, and then we also have the chemical reaction of photosynthesis, so plants are always going to be losing water. Now it's important for the plant to get a balance of water so that it can prevent wilting or death. Now a large amount of water is actually lost via the stomata. Now the stomata are mainly found on the underside of the leaf and that's to prevent the majority of that water being lost by evaporation. However a large number of stomata are needed to ensure that we get a good supply of gas exchange. Now this means that the number, position, size and distribution of the stomata is important and that varies from different plant to plant, which also varies from the area they live in and the amount of water that the plant actually requires. Now when plants are exposed to large amounts of sunlight that means that they need a, a bigger supply of water. Now because the leaves do the photosynthesis, that's where the, most of the water ends up. 
Now, because of that production of glucose, it changes the concentration gradient, meaning that osmosis brings up more water to the leaves. Now, that also means that the guard cells become turgid and the stomata open fully, allowing for more gas exchange. So more photosynthesis, more gas exchange, bigger concentration gradient. Transpiration is the movement of water throughout the whole plant. Now it's powered by the evaporation of water from the leaf. It starts by water evaporating through the stomata and leaving the leaf. Water then passes from the xylem cells to the leaf cells via osmosis. Now the xylem cells are made from dead cells and they contain a hollow centre which is called the lumen. Water enters the xylem cells at the roots to replace the water lost and it acts a similar way to a straw when you suck the straw. Now water enters the roots via the root hair cells using osmosis. Minerals from the soil are also carried Things like potassium, nitrates and phosphorus are also within this transpiration system. Now the roots also anchor the plant into the ground as well as absorb the minerals. Which helps keep the plant into the ground as well. And the last part of the transpiration system involves the translocation of sugar. And that's done by the phloem, which are made from living cells. There are four main factors that affect the rate of transpiration. The first is light, which increases the amount of transpiration because more photosynthesis occurs when there is more light. The second is air movement or wind which increases transpiration as it can physically remove the water from the leaf. Temperature increases transpiration by evaporation and by increasing the rate of photosynthesis so again it changes that concentration gradient and causes more water to move to the leaf. Humidity is which is the amount of water in the air, decreases transpiration as there is a lower concentration gradient between the outside of the leaf and the inside of the leaf. So just to summarise then, the concentration gradient between the inside of the leaf and the outside of the leaf will affect the rate of transpiration. However, leaves have adapted to try and reduce this by having a waxy cuticle layer at the top to reduce that evaporation and the size number distribution of the stomata as well will also help to reduce or increase the amount of transpiration that occurs. Now measuring the rate of transpiration can be done using a potometer. Now what this does is it can measure how much water is being used by transpiration. So if we look at this diagram of how it's set up, we have a plant here that has the stem going into a capillary tube containing water. Now all the water that will go into the leaf will come from this capillary tube. Now what will happen is there will be an air bubble at this point here and that air bubble will move up towards here as transpiration increases. Now all of this needs to be sealed in order for the water to be sucked up through here. So there will be an air bubble that starts on the zero line and it will move up so you can measure the rate of transpiration. Okay so that concludes our lesson on uh, transporting plants or transpiration. A couple of key terms to, to remind ourselves of. Transpiration is the movement of water throughout the plant and then there is translocation that is the movement of sugars throughout the plant. Um, the movement of water it happens via osmosis and it moves in the direction of the concentration gradient which normally moves up towards the leaf 
through the stem from the root. Um, we've also looked at the uh, how you can measure that rate of transpiration and the factors that affect it. So things like uh, wind, temperature, light and humidity can affect the rate of transpiration which can be measured using a potometer. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the lesson and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.